Hello everyone, I'm Aaron, a birding naturalist. Welcome back to another video. I would like to share some amazing information about a really cool insect that we see all around us. Water striders. Water striders, water skaters, water skeeters, pond flies, puddle flies, puddle skaters, tons of different names for these critters. Uh, and part of the reason is that there are so many of them. Water striders or water skaters, whatever you want to call them, are found all around the world. And there's not one species of them. In fact, it's an entire family of over 1,700 species. In California, we have about 10 of them. And one of the reasons that they are found all around the world is they're incredibly good dispersers. I didn't know this, but water skaters, they got wings. So they're really good at floating along the surface of the water, but they can also fly, which is what allows them to disperse really, really effectively to even very remote little pools of water. And they live on all sorts of different bodies of water. They generally prefer water that's sort of calmer and stiller, but that is by no means a requirement. In fact, not only do they not have to live on very still water, they can live on sort of rough water, they can even live out in the open ocean. This is one of very few insects to have colonized the open ocean. And in fact, about 10% of the species of water strider found worldwide are marine. Absolutely wild. They have a fun life cycle. They lay their eggs on submerged veg vegetation or rocks, and those eggs then hatch and go through a series of five nymph stages before reaching adulthood. Each nymph stage takes about a week to 10 days. They reach adulthood, and then they start scooting around the water, finding mates. This is another point where they're interesting from a sort of evolutionary biology standpoint, because we think of evolution and natural selection as kind of a pressure pushing species in various directions to better adapt and conform to their environment. However, it's not always very clean. The females of the water striders favor mating with smaller males because the way that these insects mate is the males climb onto the backs of the females and are carried around on top of their backs for a while on the surface of the water. So. A smaller male means a lighter male, means less energy that the female has to expend to carry him around. So females prefer smaller males. However, larger males are more effective at pushing their rivals away and off of females. So this is a place where female selection is pushing male size in one direction, get smaller. But male-male competition is pushing the same trait, male size, in the opposite direction, get bigger and more effective that way. So evolution is sort of doing this compromise, this balancing act between the female choice and the male competition to decide on the size of a male water strider's body. Another fun thing that I just recently learned about these critters is that they are carnivorous. They hang around on the surface of the water, waiting for an insect or spider, or something similar, to fall and drop onto the surface of the water. Then, that little critter usually starts struggling, sending out ripples and vibrations through the surface of the water that the water striders can then detect, rush over, and grab them. Speaking about predation, I've always kind of been curious about why these insects don't get eaten by fish all the time. I mean, it seems like they're just such an easy target. They're just sitting there on the surface of the water. If you were a fish, it seemed very, very simple to come up and grab them. But it turns out they actually have a gland that produces a chemical that repels fish. Fish do not like them. And so that's why they don't get eaten by fish very often. They do, however, get eaten by birds. Birds are probably their number one primary predator. So they do have to worry about uh, things like flycatchers or other small insectivorous birds coming down and picking them up off the surface of the water. 
Speaking of the surface of the water, a lot of people ask, and I was curious myself, how do these things stay on the surface of the water? So they rest on the surface tension. Water has a surface tension, and so it can actually support a small amount of weight without bursting through into the water itself. Um, but the way that these insects specifically are able to harness that surface tension sort of ability is that they're covered in hydrophobic hairs. So these are hairs all over their legs, all over their uh, abdomen and thorax and head, all over their bodies. And hydrophobic means that fearing water, doesn't like water. And so they are covered in these hairs that have a chemical property that actually repulses water. And so that's what allows them to sort of hang out on the surface and skate around without becoming wet, without sinking into the water itself. So as we watch the uh, water striders skating around on the surface of this little stream behind me, I'm curious to know, what do you call these things? What names do you have for these amazing little insects that skate along the surface of the water. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a little something about these worldwide family of insects. As always, thank you very much for the view. If you enjoy this kind of content and want to support me, like and subscribe. And as always, enjoy the natural world.